everybody. Welcome back to episode 92. Yeah. 92. Uh, on this yeah. Thursday. Um, so I was thinking what we could do, talk about, is um, Throwback Thursday. Oh. Today's Thursday to December it 5th, is. when we talked about our health goals for 2021. Oh. <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I decided we could update how, how it's going, you know, and everything like that. You um, made the how it's go how, how it started, <laughs> how it's going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. Um, but it is something that we've kind of kept well we have kept up yeah with. i mean we um, have yeah we have. so i'm super proud of us i'm hearing a lot of funny memes and stories on um instagram and tiktok whatever when people are like it's a year later and they're like oh crap <laughs> you know it's like didn't do anything for a year you, waited out you know and, the um the um this probably it's it's an age thing and probably no one will remember this but you know at some point in the 70s they released two greatest hits um records beatles albums i think they were both double albums but one was like the early part of their career and it showed um and one was the early part one was the later part so kind of like skinny elvis versus fat elvis <laughs> so the photos were uh, the cover photos were the same they were like looking over this balcony kind of a, a the corner of a balcony and the four of them were gathered around the corner looking down. The shot was from above. So the first picture is all them with all their kind of short hair and wearing suits. And then the other picture is long hair and beards and everything like that. And a friend of mine who's got a record store in Elgin, Illinois, a place called Rediscover Records. So if you ever want to buy records in yeah. Elgin, go to there. My friend Rich Wagner posted a year ago today. So in March of, of 2020, when it was just taking off, he posted the two images side by <laughs> side, the short hair versus the long hair. And that was his, you know, when the lockdown started right. and when the lockdown ends. And that was long before any of us had any idea how long it was going to take. So that That's was really so funny. funny. Fortuitous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm totally glad that we did not give up throughout the whole um, quarantine situation. And we have kept up our exercise regime. Although today I overslept, <laughs> my alarm went off, <laughs> and I was happen. like, I like set my alarm, then I needed like 10 minutes just to like, before I get out of bed, just to think about getting out of bed. And then I must have just hit the snooze button, so thanks for waking me up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was a little confused. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is she going to get up today? Um, well, I couldn't, you know, sometimes you don't hear things, so I didn't know if you were up. Yeah. I heard Mark in the kitchen, and I thought it was you. Yeah, so usually what we like to do, well, David usually gets up before me, works out, and then I work out after, um, and then we're kind of like getting not, ready. It's not because we can't work out. That's true. Time. We do. We, we On Saturdays, we work out together, um, and obviously, we've walked together and like done things together, um, such as, uh, but I kind of think it's like one of those things where we kind of made the decision at the beginning of... Um, just to like not, you know, just to keep active kind of thing. I think that's the hardest part. In fact, I thought it was funny on my new um, phone watch. It reminds you to like, just a basic thing like standing a minute every hour, which you think is like ridiculous. Why wouldn't I stand for an hour? But then when you think about it, there's times at your desk, you could be sitting there for several hours and not even move. Is it just for a minute, an hour? I thought. I it think was... that's what my goal is. <laughs> oh. Well. Um, is just to have, stand up for a minute. But I, you do lose like track of like, how long have I been actually sitting? Because that's the worst to be just sitting, sitting, sitting all day. Um, so yeah, we uh, I've mentioned before, and we'll link back to the um, December fifth one. We have an exercise bike. We have a workout area in our basement. Um, we have weights now. Um, but then there's also, you know, I was thinking about this today. There's also you don't need anything. There's so many um, exercise video videos you can do on YouTube. There's so many out there. Also with our cable. Um, we, you have exercise videos that are come with your cable. So check that out. You like to do that in front with all the curtains open in front of the house, just to show the neighbors <laughs> yeah. that you're working out. I don't do exercise videos. Well, I kind of think like in the morning, like nobody really can like, I'm mean, like in the living room, nobody can, and there's a front porch. So I kind of think like if I am working out in there, nobody can really see me, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'll go outside and check. <laughs> yeah, let's do and that. I'll tell you, <laughs> tell you like, if you oh, can be no. seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like having a Peloton bike in front of a window. <laughs> it, it kind of is. It kind of is. Because yeah. you're showing up. 
but maybe I'm inspiring people across the street. Yeah. I'm just like, she's at it again. She's got the weights out. She's doing squats. <laughs> we don't know anything about the people across the street. <laughs> They're just... <clears throat> um, but yeah, so we definitely have um, kept up that part of the bargain. And I think for, um, in general, um, we are definitely eating healthy. Um, cutting back on some of the snacks. I'm trying to cut back on my love of Cheetos, <laughs> even though those yeah. are my favorite. I thought you were going to say cheese, which is also... Cheese is up a there. A problem. Che- <laughs> A problem. Jeez, oh, it's cats are, if, if the, it's not an earthquake, it's yeah, the cats, it's the running, cats running through here. But the funny thing about me and Cheetos is that even though I love them so much, and then the next time like it's I'm at the, you know, store or whatever, I'm like, don't do it, you know, and then it's like next thing you know they're in my cart. How you must it? think that in your head because I've never heard you say that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think about it in my head. Like, <laughs> why would you get something that you love so much that you can eat the whole bag? But um, portioning it out and not eating the whole bag in one sitting, so that's. It's but a you plus. never do that. No, I you never, never do. eat any. I can. I mean, I don't, but I can easily eat an entire bag of anything. Uh, you know, sitting around on a Friday night watching TV or whatever. And I think uh, that's not a good thing. I think another good thing that we um, have gotten in the habit of doing is um, no seconds after dinner, which I think is huge that's because. True. Um, I always want to though. Same. But I think, and it's hard now for since um, when I'm cooking now it's just me and David because our oldest is um, staying at a friend's house at her partner's house, and then our youngest is at college. So and Mark is vegan, so he eats his own food. So That's true. we're only cooking for two now. However, um, when I made the pasta thing the other night. I made a big pot again, like I made cooking for a whole family, and oh, I was just like, well. "What am I doing?" However, we ate that for dinner, and we both had it for lunch two days in a row. Twice, right. so I thought that was um, an economical um, yeah. thing, and plus, and we, I didn't eat a whole lot either, you know, in any one yeah. of time. So that's I like I was actually really made. excited when I was like, "I wonder if Dave ate that," and then I went in the refrigerator. There was enough for me. Oh, there was. Like, a, I, there's no way I could have. I couldn't eaten remember how much was left. It was a lot. <laughs> it was in two containers. Yeah. And there was still most of one container left. Uh, when we make chili, it's always that way. There's always... Yeah. We, we'll, we'll get at least two dinners out of it mm-hmm. and then multiple lunches. My favorite. But I think it's kind of one of those things I just have to be more conscious of is like when we're doing our grocery list it's is... completely out of control now. I know. And usually it's not like this the whole for house is another uh, few hours. So it's like early time. Um, but is um like uh, realistically how many how many fruits and vegetables can we eat in a week you know so it's just kind of like paring that down a little bit so it's not like we're throwing things out that's because true. we didn't get to them um yeah that's one of my least favorite things is to throw food out this um week the highlight uh, vegetable i got was green beans we had some for dinner yeah but the last two mornings i actually air fried some for breakfast which turned out amazing are you is that legal can are you allowed to eat green beans <laughs> for breakfast i know it's like a weird thing. I don't think I've ever done it before. Um, it shouldn't be a weird thing, though. When I know. You think about it, it's just food. I know. And it, and that's another thing to get out of the habit of, um, like, eating just because it's, like, lunchtime, you know, kind of thing. Um, I tend to eat a later breakfast, so maybe not until, like, 9 or something like that. And then um, just because it's 12 doesn't mean, like, oh, it's lunchtime. You know, if I'm not hungry, I'm like, why am I eating? That's a work-from-home thing, too. Definitely. Because, and that's always happened to me, is because you're not going anywhere. So a lot of times, you know, I'm, I mean, I guess in a way it's good because I'm working early. I'm always at my computer, and so I'm working it, depending on when I get done working out, you know, 6.30, well, not 6.30. Sometimes before six, but certainly by seven in the morning, mm-hmm. I'm at my desk and so forth. And I and you know things come in, and I'm dealing with it. So I don't eat right away. Don't eat breakfast right away. Make the coffee right away, but I don't always eat, you know. So then you eat a later breakfast, and then you get tied up on doing things, you know. Uh, and you don't get around. I mean, there's plenty of days I don't get around to eating lunch, or or it'll be three o'clock in the afternoon, and all of a sudden you're like, well. I got five minutes now. But I kind of think you fall in the same boat as I do sometimes too, is having colleagues on the East Coast, so they're an hour ahead. So you're almost like, you know, they've already been at work for an hour and like, you know, replying, things like that. Although I will say, you know, I rarely get emails from, um, I rarely get emails in situations like that, like at six o'clock. Sometimes 
uh, people will respond to, you know, because of the time change, you might send something out late in the day, they don't see it until the next morning and they want to respond to it. And that's fine. But it's not, sometimes it's the people right here in the Chicago area who are emailing me at 6.30 in the morning, you know. Not the day hasn't started yet, please. Not replying. But I, but I, but I do because I don't want to not respond. I know. You, know. you don't want things to get buried. So if I'm in the basement working out and my, you know, get an alert on my phone, I usually will respond to it. Anyway, the point is that because you don't have a normal schedule, like you know, if you're if you're leaving the house at a certain time to get to the office at a certain time, maybe you eat something early. Right. And then you go to work and then you're in an office and then other people are taking a break at a certain time. So you take a break. Yeah. When you're working at home um, and have been doing it for a long time, you know, you don't have that regular structure of the day. So I end up doing a fair amount of work before I eat anything for breakfast and then that pushes lunch back. And then... Right. And then there's dilemma like, do I eat a huge lunch now because it's going to be a few hours to dinner, you know, and it's no. like that whole thing. Right. Um, but uh, I think just keeping in mind that we're still going to be in this boat for um, more months to come uh, kind of thing is not have like every day be a party. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is kind of how it started out. I mean, it I, definitely it was, started out, yeah. the funny thing is, I mean, we certainly were working a lot of hours right mm -hmm. from the beginning. I mean, it wasn't like that, especially, you know, like my job actually picked up because of the pandemic. Yeah, you were um, busy as all get out. But... You know, when when you you don't have things like taking the kids to school in the morning, or going picking them up in the afternoon, or you know, it, you kind of fall into a pattern. We have been bad about one thing though, since you like to tell our business. <laughs> we have been bad about one thing is that we do not um, regularly eat dinner at the dinner table any longer. That's true. We do watch TV at dinner. And yeah. I always think of that Seinfeld episode. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. And you could forget about you know, eating in front of Watching the TV, TV. <laughs> because you know what? You got to talk about your day. How was your day? Um, uh, but we so have, uh, that's not exactly how it goes, but, um, but we have been bad about that. However, it hasn't really affected all these other things. Like it doesn't mean that we eat excessive amounts. It right. doesn't mean that we're, you know, party. But we do, you know, it's just kind of like, like, that's our version of just wearing sweatpants all day. Like a lot of people just, <laughs> exactly. you know, they, they're, and, and God bless you, if you can get work done dressed like that, more power to you. But I can't, I, if something is a mental thing where I have to dress like I'm at work. I definitely, in the beginning, um, people would say like, why are you, why are you dressing up or why are you putting makeup on and doing your hair and stuff like that? It's like, well, A, I'm at work, you know, kind of thing. And two... Since everything's on, you know, everyone wants you to be well, on right. camera, you know, kind of thing. You don't really have the benefit of being, like, off camera and just talking so much. But it's funny because it's kind of a reverse pressure. Now it's almost like there's pressure on you to dress down all the time. Not, not necessarily you, but I mean. Right. And, I, you know, the thing is, is that um, they, they don't necessarily, I mean, I can wear, um, like, workout clothes, right? Or I can wear a suit and a dress shirt and that kind of thing. But in between, you know, if you're kind of short and kind of overweight, um, you know, they don't, they, there is not a, a pair of jeans on the face of the earth that will fit someone my size and shape. And, and it's weird because there are 18 million different varieties of there jeans is. now. It's not like it was when we were kids where there were like one or two, you know, there were Levi's or there were, right. you know, there were a handful of, of brands and a handful of styles. Now there's a million styles and there's a million that just don't fit someone like me. The inseam is too long or whatever. And see, I think that's what's unfair is like women have so many more choices of like, like, you know, the jeans that are fake, that are stretchy, not real jeans. Kind well, of thing. they make those. But the thing is, is that, you know, I mean, I had suits because, you know, I was a lawyer going to court and all that sort of thing. And the thing about suits is, that you typically have them tailored. Yes. Even if they're off the rack, not custom, you still have them tailored, so they fit. So I've got all these nicer clothes that fit, so I wear them because they fit. Right. And they're actually, it's more comfortable than stuff that doesn't fit. So I, I just, you know, I, I'm sorry. I That's how I'm going to dress. That's, I'm too old. And I think that, um, you know, people that I work with have just kind of, they kind of accept that. That, you know, I'm, I don't think it's a bad I'm old thing. and this is how I dress and you don't like it, 
You do the work. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> do it without me. See how that goes. No, I'm kidding. I'm absolutely kidding. But, yeah. But it is, it is a funny thing. Um, so, yeah, we were just kind of, like, continuing on because now, like, the focus now is, like, summer's almost here, you know, kind of thing. So not We have that to really show care. up our tattoos. Right, exactly. Right. And um, not that we're going to the beach anytime soon. Our, the pool in our town is opening this summer, but they it's by appointment open. only or something. I'm not sure yeah, how that's going to work. It's going to be complicated. Well, but, I mean, it, in theory, it could work. I mean, we've been there at times where it wasn't that crowded. Yeah. But on a hot day in the middle of the summer, I don't know how they're going to yeah. work that out. Um, and we liked going to the pool, the, our public pool, when our kids were small, um, cause it was just something fun to do on a weekend. Um, just going and my favorite this. part was when we would go at night, cause it would be oh, open yeah. sometimes until nine o'clock at night and nobody would be there. Like on a really hot summer night and we'd have like this giant pool to ourselves practically. And then basically almost put them in their pajamas, <laughs> bring their yeah. pajamas yeah. and then get, you know, showered and they were ready to go to bed when, by the time we got home. So that was always fun. Um, good times there. And you actually, um, I always wanted to do this, but I never, I never acted on it. Is um, when you were training for the triathlon, you'd swim in the morning. Oh yeah. Because they had lap swim, um, which I always thought would be like so fun to do and like so refreshing. But then it's also like, what if the water's really cold and what if this is not right. fun? And, and, and sometimes it would be. And the the thing is, like the problem with the triathlon is since you're swimming in open water, it's you can't you have to you have to have some way of of training for that. And so yeah, that we had a we have um, an, a full Olympic size pool that's fifty meters, the length is fifty meters, and then one that's um, fifty yards, so it's a little bit shorter. Um, and they used to have a lap swim at the bigger pool, and that was nicer because the um, uh, swimming leg of the Olympic distance triathlon is fifteen hundred meters, so obviously it's easier to you know figure out it's like roughly how far to the go. mile. 1500 yards you have to do a little bit extra um in order to kind of get close to that and you know approximate that distance but also being in a larger pool where you've got to go 50 meters or 50 yards before you turn it's a little closer to open water swimming than it than you know swimming in a health club where you might have a 25 yard or 25 oh, meter pool yeah i wasn't thinking about that and the fact is when there's a lot of people in the pool um you know, there's a little bit of a current that kind of goes with you. Right. Right. Uh, in a, in a it's larger not pool. It's going to be still yeah. <laughs> when you're with it. In a larger pool, it's not that way. So, yeah, it's still not a perfect, it's still not a perfect, um, uh, you know, you're not really replicating the experience of swimming in open water, but it's close. Definitely. It's better than nothing. And I want to say that if they, the open swim would be like, you could get there at like 5.30 in the morning or something. Uh, like that, like 5.30 to 8 or something like that. 6.30 to 8. Yeah, I it might have been 5.30. I don't recall. I would always get there at the beginning, but there would be people waiting. There were always people waiting. Um, and, you know, and I would swim roughly a mile or so, and then not particularly fast. Um, and I'd get out of the pool, and there would still be people. People but that got there when I got there would still be going. I mm-hmm. like that, though, because um, when you do stuff like that on the regular, when we went to our high school track to van there, it'd be the same people out there. So it's always ni- nice to like run into the same people and it's just like, you know, give them a little bit like, yeah. It's good and bad because it's bad because if you want to take a day off, then you're thinking those people are going to know <laughs> that I took a Where day off. You? <laughs> yeah. Even though in all, in all likelihood, they're not paying any attention at all. No. But there will be some people, like when we'd run on the track, there would be people who were there every single day. So yeah. if you, you know, uh, we were we were pretty good about we it. We were really good at it. Um, yeah, well, that's how come I have no cartilage left in my knee because we were running six days a week and I was yeah. running at least four miles a day. It was great until until my knees just gave out. And I always have done like a run-walk kind of thing. So even when we trained for the marathon twice, I never just ran all the way through. I would do like um, a six-minute run and a two-minute walk, six-minute run, two-minute walk from the beginning just because I just, I don't know, I just didn't have the stamina to like keep going without stopping or whatever. Um, which once I did train for it, I understood because um, we have other family members who've run it before we did, and I would see people start walking in the beginning, and I was like, oh, no, they're going <laughs> to, it's going to take them forever. And it's like, no, that's their plan, you know, kind of thing. So um, don't worry about it. And I think 
uh, in the five marathons I did, I think there's only, I think the second, my second one was the only time I actually ran start to finish without walking at all. Although, you know, you get a little bit of a break when you go through the aid stations. Right. I mean, because you can run through them, but nobody does because, you know, you stop and you get water or Gatorade or whatever. But it's not um, like you're walking for five or ten minutes. Right. But most of them, like the last one we did, I made it through 21 miles without walking at all. And then, you know, walked a little bit. I ran most of the last five miles, but I walked a little bit here and there. Yeah, you always had good stamina. Well, I don't know about that, but I <laughs> got through it. That one was slow. That one was painfully slow. I'm pretty sure I was the last one in our group to finish the full. I think. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, I mean, it was a small group, and I was not the last person overall to finish. And we had a person um, in our who was at that event, CMEC. Uh, oh, I who forgot about had, that. Had, just for fun, like he runs like 50 miles um, yeah, he's just insane. to do that, or he'll run. He ran like a, um, like a circle, I want to say, in a park in Chicago. For like eight hours or something yeah. as a fundraiser, yeah. um, just because when you do, we ran with team and training, which raises money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So you, in order to do the event, you raise a certain amount of money. So um, David and I have always had to do that every year, which was um, another added pressure on top of training and having three small kids and both working full time. It was kind of crazy. But he did that as a fundraiser, like every mile you could donate like a thing. So, um, but yeah, he was just nuts. And actually when we, I did the half that time. And so I talked to him a little bit when we were um, in the stadium and I was like, How when you were waiting for me, <laughs> you waited for me plenty of times. But um, when he, I was like, why do you like, how can you do that? You know, like, how can you just like run 25, 30 miles? And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, I just love it. You know? So I was like, well, that's not me. <laughs> The, the first marathon I ran was in 2001, and I was, um, um, d you know, the, the common thing, it's not, everybody trains a little bit differently, but the common thing is that you, in training, you only go up to 20 miles. You mm -hmm. don't run past that in a training run because you're more likely to get injured in the last few miles of, of a marathon. So you cut it off. It so they also, like, if you can run 20, you can pretty much, yeah, yeah you're yeah. guaranteed. But so I was out on at, near Brookfield Zoo, which is near us. Um, there's a forest preserve and there's a bike and running path. And it was, at that point, it's longer now than it was back then. But at that point, it was about six and a half miles. And so I ran out and back. So it was 13 miles. And then I did three and a half out and back to get to my, or yeah, right, three and a half out and back to get to my 20 miles. And while I was, and it was pouring rain, but it wasn't like, I mean, it wasn't like hard rain, but it was raining persistently the entire time. But it was actually kind of nice because I wasn't overheated, you know. Right. And there was a guy that we just kind of crossed paths and we ran together for a while. And I don't know, I can't remember his name or anything like that, but we were talking because we were running slow enough to talk. And he was training for a 50K, which is 31 miles. Yikes. Um, yeah. That was kind of cool. Um, but I, the problem with that uh, training run was that because of the weather conditions, it was actually, like I said, it was really pleasant to run in the rain. It wasn't, um, you know, you might think it would be awful, but actually when it's that, when it's warm out and you're running that kind of distance, the rain was great. Yeah. I loved it. But the problem is it gives you an unrealistic sense of, of what it's going to be like that the day of the race because it's probably going to be either a lot colder and windier or a lot warmer. You're not going to have the benefit of the rain. It might be humid without rain, which is awful. Uh, so right. the, the actual race was did not go as well as that 20 And that's uh, always unfortunate run. too because the, the, um, when I did the first one, did the 20 miles, I felt great, you know, yeah. and I couldn't believe it. And one of the things where we did Chicago, we trained in the Chicago, like, lakefront, but when you, um, where we started, sometimes you had to run um, north and then come back, run south, and then come back, but then you might have to go back and then come back to the table yeah. kind of thing. And so I remember coming back to the table, I still had another, was it a mile and a half there and back? I think it was a little bar. more than that. I think it was, it was about... Two uh, miles. Well... I think the total distance there and back was about three. So 
It was about three and a half, I mean. Right. I think. So I remember coming back and I was like, okay, I'm going to finish this out. You were already finished. And I like came back around and I like could not believe it. I was like, I cannot believe I just ran 20 miles. And I was like, this is amazing. But as any runner knows, you have your good days and then you, the yeah. days where you're just like, I don't even think I can run a mile. And then the next time you do, do great. And then how team and training works, especially like for me, I had never run more than... A 10K before I, I did the, um, I think, um, I think the Rich right. Run um, was probably yeah. the largest, um, six miles. So then once you do that, then every time, every week, they raise up the stakes. So it'll be like, you know, you'll start small and then you might run six miles and then five miles and then nine miles. You know, so you keep on going back and forth. And I remember the first time... I did 12 miles. I was like, this is insane. I can't even believe that I did this. And the next week is like, oh, we're doing 14. And you're like, what? <laughs> you know, this is too crazy. Well, I think, I think there's something about that 20 mile run. As long as you're, you know, you haven't gotten injured and you're, you're, um, sticking with the training. I think that is usually in a lot of ways, that's the best training run you have. That's definitely the best time you have. Um, you're not necessarily on, there's no time pressure. You typically are, you have a pretty good idea you can handle it. Like when I did it, I think I had done two 18 milers before I did the 20. Not, so it wasn't, it wasn't three weeks in a row, 18, 18, 20. I think I, it was two 18s and then a, an off week where I might have done 14 or 15 and then 20. Right. Um, at that point, I was training on my own. But um, there's something about that. I think, and I think that um, if you didn't have that little, you know, mental um, uh, advantage or whatever, that little help, that little lift from doing 20 and feeling good, you know, I think it'd be yeah. much harder to show up, you know, it's usually two to three weeks before the marathon that you do that. So you have a little bit of recovery time too. Yeah. And so um, I prefer two weeks. Sometimes it's three weeks. I, 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 I want to keep lot. it, you know, do 20 then maybe just run a 10k in the in between you know the week in between and then do the race but in any event um i think that you know at least in my experience i've only done it five times but that 20 miler always is the one where you kind of feel the best Definitely. you know and you come away with the thing well of course i can do 20 yeah no problem which is totally insane <laughs> yeah and then when you're actually in the we're running long but i will just say this when you're actually in the race and you get to 20 miles you're like how am i going to run another 10k the, the 6.2 miles i know and then the chicago marathon is 20 like chinatown um, well it's it's changed from time to time it used to be right by comiskey park where the white Sox played i have no idea what's even called now. i just remember going you know getting past 20 and then people in the crowd being like you're almost there yeah. and i was like right now i'm like a 16 minute mile so i'm not almost there yeah. it's going to be another hour and a half <laughs> i think that people have this concept that you kind of hit the wall around that point and so they're trying to be uplifting but for one thing, you know, I'm not even sure for most runners there's an actual wall that you hit. It's just as you go, sometimes you're feeling good, sometimes you're not. It's just the way it and, is. And um, I also know we're going long, so I'm going to wrap this up too. But um, the first time that I did it, when I got to Comiskey Park, turned that corner and just realized how far I had to go. I saw a lady that was in front of me, and you may not remember the story, but um, that worked at a bead store in I my do um, the story. town, and she taught me. I took a jewelry making class with her, and she was in front of me, and I was like, "This is really weird." I hadn't seen her for several years, probably many years, but I recognized her, and so I just kind of like stared at the back of her head, like, "I'll just keep up with her. I'll just keep up with her. I'll just keep up with her." So that's what I did. But then our coach Art, who was amazing, yeah, Art was um, cool. came back to see how I was doing probably at 25 on the 25 mile market, um, came back and then ran with me the rest of the way. So I yeah. thought that was good. Cause otherwise there's just no way there's just too long. Um, so that was a roundabout way of like our health um, thing, the journey <laughs> where we are now, we're not, running, we're going, right we're not now. running any marathons anytime soon. Um, but we will follow up. Let's this summer. Like, well, that is three months ago. We talked about it and yeah. then we'll see where, um, where we're at and we'll just kind of keep you up to date on that so let us know if you're concentrating on your health getting back into the real world and um facing reality, <laughs> facing reality. <laughs> um and um we will talk to you guys later have a good night bye